Welcome to Celebrating Act Two. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi, John. How are you doing? Art, good to see you. I'm doing well. Um, I'm having a great summer. How about you? Are you going out more? I am. Or are you I stuck am, in the house? I am out and about uh, in the mornings at senior hours at the stores and a little bit here good. and there, but really not much of other than that. Good, but you're wearing a mask when you go out. All the time. Good. Good for you. And I, I do too. Uh, even though you and I have kind of different attitudes about the uh, – efficiency and who should wear the masks and all of that kind of thing. I think we agree that everybody uh, should we be, be wearing a mask now it would be the best thing. But yeah. of course, not everybody sees it that way. So I think you and I and a lot of other people uh, our age are in the minority these days when I go out uh, and I see most people not wearing a mask. Well, you know, it's so. a, just as an interesting note, um, I was uh, thinking back to um, uh, my mother had three sisters. Uh, okay. They were all born uh, in the range of um, 1909, 1910 to 1913. And so here are four sisters, uh, basically uh, in the New York area, uh, who lived through the, the Spanish flu pandemic uh, uh, back uh, that in the 1918 to 1920 period of time, depending on the first word, second word, that kind of thing. Sure. And and that was a very devastating worldwide uh, pandemic, not unlike, yep. our, not unlike ours. Uh, and um, uh, I noticed that, and I don't know whether it was in the middle or the beginning, or it was probably near the end, that they had pictures of people in major cities wearing masks, like not quite the surgical masks that there are today, but masks that maybe cover a good portion of the face. Really? So f photos from 1920s or so, mm -hmm. and they were wearing masks because of the Spanish flu. That's interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that uh, they did any of that. I just uh, had heard that, you know, they didn't have any of the medical um, efficiencies or whatever the right word is for, for to deal with the flu, and a lot of people died. Um, that's interesting. Yeah. So, the, but, you, you know, that's... That makes sense because the idea of isolating a patient uh, who is sick um, is a really old, 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 yeah, way know. before 1900, old technique. And, and, it, it, and it's done because it works most I of the time. I think the basic concept is any kind of face covering helps prevent the spread of the flu because of the, if, if a person wearing it uh, is, has, has the flu, or, or not the flu, the, the, the virus, uh, they can't spread it as easily because it gets captured inside the mask. And then, right. of course, masks go over. To one, to one degree or another, depending on how efficient the mask is. Yeah. Right. But yeah. If, if, you, if you cover your nose and your mouth, then that's the likely that it lessens the spread of, of the aerosol of coming out of your sure. mouth. And that's why they're saying, you know, blow, if you have to sneeze, go in, sneeze in your elbow kind right. of thing. Uh, you know, it's better, it's better than spreading it out. Right. So if everybody's wearing them, then whoever happens to have it reduces the amount of spread that they can yes, have. And absolutely. also, also depending upon the type of mask you have, it provides greater and greater protection to you, even though the, the Monica, the, the words out there is, well, you're wearing it for somebody else. Uh, right. you're, you've been a great proponent of saying, but it also protects me. Uh, absolutely. You've talked about uh, absolutely. It, 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 let's just think about the logic of this. I don't. It's not a scientific, but you you put on a mask and it stops your. If you have the virus, it stops it from getting out. Right. Most of it from getting out past the mask. Right. Why wouldn't it stop most of it from coming in through the mask? And and the answer is it will. But the masks, depending on the mask. You know they're going to be more efficient. The N95 right, which is, not, is the medical, mask. Right. The, that at, at the material is kind of a thick felt, you know, so it's hard to breathe through it. But it also wraps around the nose and really forms a seal around your mouth and nose, kind of like a uh, scuba mask. Right. And also, as a matter of fact, they, they've shown plenty of times on TV about uh, these people coming off a 10 hour shift and they're having all sorts of irritations yes. uh, surrounding yeah. here. 
Uh, sure, nurses and and uh, medical workers. And, yeah, and it's. I got to tell you, I've got an N95. I keep it in the car. Uh, I don't use it very often just because it's so inconvenient. Uh, but it is. Uh, you can see how it would be much more effective than. Well, here's here's the mask that my wife bought a box full of. Mm. And you see these on doctors too. You know, you often see them. It's got a little wire in here, so it can it can kind of hold the shape to your nose, but not much. And quite frankly, when you you know when you pull it around and spread it out this way, aerosol, virus, whatever you want to call it, can get in from the sides and the top and the bottom. But you know, it's better than nothing. Quite frankly, what I like is I like this was made by. Uh, my daughter's friend and it's a homemade mm. uh, cloth mask and quite frankly it's it's no th thinner than 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 this store-bought medical thing but what I like is it's shaped to go around your nose mm. you know and it doesn't have a wire so I think it would be a little bit more effective but you've got a whole bunch of masks. You did yeah. the same thing. You've experimented with. So yeah. So interestingly, um, uh, when we first started, I had N95s in the garage from a project they did ten years ago. Sure. So I, I, they, they were selling them in, in Home Depot for construction. Yeah, and they were not that expensive. And by right. the way, it's N95 because uh, its claim is that it'll stop up to ninety-five percent of of things going through it, not a hundred percent. There's no mask right. that's unless they have it totally enclosed. Like uh, you see some of these hazmat suits. But, right, they look like space but suits. The first yeah. mask that uh, I had was my uh, daughter in law got these very thin uh, things made out of actually swimwear, so you could actually breathe through it. So it yeah. did stop some of the out, outgo, uh, but it was, I mean, you could breathe in and out of it so easily that uh, right. I'm sure not, there was zero protection coming in. Then, then I found these coffee filters, which you can get for like. Uh, you know, 200 for 10 bucks. And yeah. uh, I started putting them in there and that gave me a better sense of Oh, that's a good idea. Capturing stuff. And I had read that someplace, yeah. you know, on, on uh, uh, Dr. Internet talked about yeah. how effective that was. And then my next mask, uh, which I also use with these uh, 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 coffee filters, uh, is um, my wife found these on Facebook. So, oh, yeah. So, it you know it just now what kind of what kind of material is that made out of? Uh, yeah, custom yeah, designs. It's, it's a it's a it's a two a series of cotton on the inside and the outside, and I yeah, I, which is which is very similar to this. Right. Uh, you know, it's uh, it, similar design, so it goes over your nose. That's good. I, I, but it's probably not much thicker. The answer is if you can breathe through it. Right. Easily. If you can breathe easily through it, it's doing less good for you. Right. Now, this is not quite the gold sand. And by the way, Linda uh, also found from a, you know, she's a, a knitter. And one of those stitching uh, organizations started making masks. And they had all sorts of colorful ones like that. Some with cats on them and all right. sorts of things. This one uh, uh, she found, uh, which I was surprised, and, uh, that had the, the Marine Corps, but you can get, you know, it could say anything. Now you sure. see. Now you see uh, some of these mayors saying Miami Beach, uh, right. no, Miami Beach cares, and you know. So right. they're really personalized. But the really interesting one. I ordered a whole bunch of the kind of masks that uh, you were showing me. The the uh, dentist surgical mask, the, yes. that lightweight. Uh, yes. Back in April, and they still haven't come. And I said, you know what? Let me get a refund. <laughs> and they responded by saying they're actually going to be there within a week. They're so, still not here. So I'll say, but, but what I found was six for like twelve bucks. Yeah. Uh, this mask, that has, um, let's see if I can hold it back closer to you. Yeah. There you go. There you go. You see, That's it's got it. a, like this little breathing thing on it. So it yeah. So it it provides. First of all, it's shaped. Okay, this is right. my go-to mask now. Yeah. Okay. Not only is it shaped to the face with a. Uh, thing for around the nose, and it has a little metal thing in there as well. Okay, yeah. but it also has a place to put a filter that they provide, which I can also cut up my coffee filters and put in. And okay. I feel that this gives me uh, it's not an N95 for sure, but you know, if I happen to wind up around people who are not wearing a mask, it's going to give me much better protection than yeah. if I just had that flimsy. 
uh, bathing suit. It, it, the uh, human ingenuity in the face of a, uh, in this case, in the face of a pandemic, but in the face of a negative uh, situation, it's just amazing, isn't it? I mean, not only did we come up with masks, but now we customize them to, uh, uh, let's see, this one, this one I think has dogs and cats on it. I don't know if you can see it, but mm. it's real cute. That, uh, and you've got the marine uh, logos, right? <laughs> but you know, what? but but interestingly, we both have family histories. So my mother was one of four sisters right. who lived through the Spanish flu. They were born in the year uh, 1910, 1911. There were four sisters. Yep. And so they were all in either their uh, to late toddler stage or in their near early teens from 1918 to 1921 during the Spanish flu, which killed zillions of people. And you right. also have a family history of that, do you not? I do. I'm named after an uncle who died at the age of 16 mm. uh, from the Spanish flu. Now, my mother's family had uh, nine children, wow. nine brothers and sisters, and he was the only one who died from the Spanish flu. Uh, we don't have any stories of anybody else getting the Spanish flu uh, but him, and he died at 16 years old. Um, so he was, in theory, uh, Athletic. We know he was athletic, but he was in theory in the peak of health, a uh, strapping young man, uh, got it and just succumbed to it after a, an illness. Very sad in the family with everybody remembered him. I'm named after him. That's mm. how much they remembered him. Um, but he was the only one. And uh, at that time, of course, you know, nobody knew what what to do. I mean, I, you, as you pointed out, there might be photographs of people in those years wearing masks, yep. but I, I don't have any family stories about people doing anything differently um, or knowing how to uh, treat somebody who had it. Today we've got uh, ventilators. You know, today we knew w within months, maybe not fast enough because China wasn't very forthcoming, but we knew within months that it was coming uh, and we knew something about it. And then every month we would learn more about it. And we finally learned that uh, the COVID-19 flu, if you want to call it that, the virus, um, really uh, targeted older people more than younger people and it more than healthy middle-aged people. And the reason seemed to be because we're more susceptible. We're underlying we're, conditions, uh, underlying mm -hmm. conditions. You know, who knows what I my my favorite quote is that. There's nobody under 60 who doesn't have high blood pressure, mm. you know, which is an underlying condition. I'm sure that's not true. But the, the point is you get to be 60, 50, 60 years old, everybody's got something. And then the older you get, the more pills you're taking for more things. So, yeah, we are definitely the most vulnerable. I think in, in the Spanish flu of 1918, um, they didn't – they weren't able to discern any of that. They didn't know – who was more vulnerable or less vulnerable, or they didn't have any of the um, public health. But I think uh, I think also because they had, had uh, uh, even less awareness that just more people were dying, so uh, of every age group. And now, of course, we're seeing younger people going yeah. in, and uh, some of them are not dying, but we don't know what the long term uh, uh, result will be for their lungs. Uh, right. Also, there are a lot of. Uh, uh, younger people now who are we're hearing about them passing away and then they find out the ones that they bothered to, to look a little bit closer that maybe they had a uh, uh, a heart condition as a right. from birth but nobody ever knew it it's like right. those you hear about a runner every so often who uh, uh, you know uh, died of an instant heart attack a massive heart attack uh, and they're the healthiest person in the world they've been you know running forever and yeah. uh, we've all heard stories about that but the yeah. one one thing that's kind of kind of I think a takeaway, okay, is that uh, regardless of um, what's going to happen, um, uh, it's it will pass someday. It may be two years, uh, right? Uh, and I would or, be or longer. We don't know, right? Or longer. But uh, doing things like wearing masks, whether you think they protect you a lot or little, right. <clears throat> certainly. We know that it protects other people. It protects us to some degree. But we know that cultures like uh, a Korea, where they all wear masks, I think they've only had a few hundred people die total in their country. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, uh, 
my my belief is that uh, however long it takes, and whether it's going to be because of vaccine or that it 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 goes through its normal course, such as the Spanish flu did over two, three, four years, however right. long it took. Uh, herd herd immunity. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That wearing a mask will protect a whole lot of people, yourself yep. and other people. And, yep. it, and it's kind of selfish if you're going out into the public area and not wearing one. Forget about protecting yourself. But it, so to me, wearing a mask is something to say, I care about you. And I, I yeah, want you to I, wear I, a mask I, to care about me. I, I agree. But unfortunately, Art, um, humans are pretty selfish creatures. And I think most people, uh, you know, when you get to be our age, maybe you start thinking more about the good of society and those people around you and all of that. But I, I got to tell you, most people under 50 are more worried about themselves. It's me, me, me. Uh, we were once part of the, what was labeled the me generation, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact. And, um, and so it's, I think that's why we're seeing a lot of crowds without masks. I think we're seeing people going to the beach despite the fact that some of the beaches were closed um, mm -hmm. because of the pandemic. Um, I think there's a, 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 it's not a rebellion per se, it's just a boredom. They're bored. They found out, we've learned so much about the COVID-19, they found out that it doesn't affect me. So if you're 30 years old, it doesn't affect me. If you're 18 years old, well, it doesn't affect me. Oh, if I get it, I'm not going to get really sick and die. And so as a result, that selfishness has kicked in. And we really need not the people over 50 to wear the masks because they're. I think they're doing it anyway. Right. We need the, the rest of society, including children, to wear masks, even as a courtesy for others, even if you don't believe you, you're worried about you know, getting it yourself. One, one of the problems is that uh, there are also people who are asymptomatic and maybe young people are more likely Absolutely. to be able to walk around like that. And then they bring it in inadvertently, giving it to their parents or to their grandparents or to other uh, people that they work with. So, Well, think, think about this for a second. Uh, you're a grandparent. I'm a grandparent. You've got kids. I've got kids. We all know if you've, if you've got kids, we all know that the kids go to school, they pick up the cold from Sally or Johnny, and they bring it home, and Everybody in the house has it within three weeks. Right. Everybody's got a cold. All right. We're sniffling. Same thing happens with the flu and the same thing happens with COVID-19. So I think kids, children, school age children uh, up to high school age are really uh, the easiest source to spread the flu. And there to me, I think they really need the education that they have a responsibility to wear masks. So I think I think that. These two old farts, yes. okay, have a common message. It's not political. It's smart, okay? It's just smart. It's smart for yourself, for others. Wear a mask. Get over it, okay? And then Be if everybody wears a mask, maybe we'll all get over it sooner rather than later without more people passing away. So, okay. Art, it's time to say goodbye. And I just want to say, wear a mask, everybody. Stay healthy. We'll see you soon. See ya. Are you smiling under that mask? I am. Me too. You can see, you can see my eyes. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.